Hello everyone. Back to the Sears Christmas book from 1954, part three. This section is the toys. Oh boy, everybody's favorite when you were the kid. You took this magazine when it came in the mail, you ran in the bathroom, you locked the door, and you spent about two hours going through every single page of the toy section. Okay, on this page, it looks like we're starting out with the books. You have your little golden books down there. Um, mostly these were like the beginning readers. Everybody had books, little books that they started out with. Parents encouraged you to read them. Your teachers encouraged you. It was just a fun thing to read your books and have your little book collection in your bedroom on your shelf. And, of course, it's got a little older. Then you got to a little thicker reading, like the um, uh, books about horses. It was a big thing to love horses in those days and to read about them. Um, there was your science, Mr. Wizard, science secrets. Boys love those. Um, Star Island mysteries. Uh, of course, there was the the books for stamp collecting, coin collecting, which was a very popular thing to do when you were probably getting in the age of 8, 9, 10. You really like to do that. Okay, so um, mystery books. When you were getting to be that preteen, that was a whole thing. If you were a girl reading the Nancy Drews, if you were a boy reading the Hardy Boys, that was great. Great reading. Really had a lot of fun with those kind of books. Anna Green Gables, that was a fun one for girls. And then over here we had the um, action toys. Kind of for the little kids, little, little kids. The way they were made, they were made to last, to go through a whole family full of kids and some after that as well. Little play telephones, I had one just like that. Um, let's see, it seems that I seen something on this page that was really cute. Oh. The wood train sets, just like they have nowadays, that they think are so unique. But hey, they've been around for a long time. The um, musical tops, those were fun. You know, you didn't go looking for your um, mom or dad's laptop or iPhone to play games on it. You had this stuff. This was the fun stuff. Let me tell you. Um, little cash register because you always played store. Puppets. You'd put little puppet shows on for your friends when they came over. And look at here. The boys love the helicopters, the tractors, the boats. These were all pieces that you could assemble them. Lots of fun. Little aircraft carrier. What about this color TV right here? Oh, yeah, the color TV. That was cool. It said you uh, pulled it and it played a whole little movie for you. And there was three more on that. They were little Disney, Donald Duck and Disney movies it played. How fun. As we were going through this, we were seeing there was a lot of little Mickey Mouse things. But, of course, that was before the park ever opened, so it had to have been just from the cartoons. And the excitement of knowing eventually you would be able to go to Disneyland. I never went as a child, but I've gone a lot as an adult. And as Walt said, never too old for Disneyland. Robots, those were really super fun. There was a lot of those. Looks like this was another little um, oh, film 
little film projector, 16 millimeter film telejector, it was called. Looks like there's Daniel Boone on there. My brother had one of these, and I played with it all the time, loading the little animals into it. Oh, more boy type toys, although, you know, I was a tomboy. I played with all the boy toys too. <laughs> but cute little army tractors. Army was something you always played too back in those days in the 50s, early 60s. And the way they made these toys, man, they just, like I say, last it just last it last it. You find all these at the collector shows and stuff. Still, some of them in pretty darn good shape. And then here, just some more cars. Notice some of them had lit up. Of course, you'd put batteries in them, and they would light up. It was a bummer, too, when your batteries wore out because it might not be till next Christmas before you get more batteries because they would be a Christmas gift for you to have more batteries for your toys. But that's okay. The toys would last from one Christmas to the next. Fire engines, oil trucks. Look at the Sinclair. Sinclair is not here. Um, I live on the West Coast, but uh, I know it's more of a, I think, a Middle America, East Coast thing. But I know when I'm on just road trips and stuff, uh, I've seen the Sinclair gas stations with the dinosaur, which is really cute. And all your earth movers. Little boys went out, played out in the backyard in a, and dug up part of the section of the lawn so they could dig in the dirt and that was okay parents didn't really mind maybe some did but mine did <laughs> and there was the horses horses again they were so exciting even though you didn't have one in your own backyard you had your rocking horses you had your little um spring action bouncing horses you don't see these anymore because those were deemed um, too dangerous. But you know what? You'd get going on those really hard. Maybe you'd end up tipping off a little bit. But you know, you just climbed right back on. You might cry a little bit. Might have got some scratches. But you got right back on your horse. When they say get back on your horse, that's what you did. You got right back on your horse. Oh, and of course, some of these uh, little tinker toys. They were fun. You could build anything you could imagine with those. Sleds. Great toy. Um, uh, ice skates? Those are different. I've never, and i never seen those things. Of course, growing up here in Oregon, we didn't always have a lot of snow and ice. Uh, it wasn't something... You know, you'd have it for a week or two here and there throughout the winter. But, um, so maybe that's why we didn't have as much of that stuff. Although we had did have a great sled. And now your little girl toys, some baby toys. And all the little outfits. All the clothes was always made so well. And every girl had a lot of toys. One time we actually almost made a move across the country. And I packed up all my dolls. And I still remember this day. I had 26 of them. <laughs> And there was days where I changed all of their clothes and put new outfits on them every single day. I was a really good mommy.
and it talks about the rooted Sarah or Saran hair. Uh, and it talks about how it can be dampened and combed and curled over and over and over again. And I do remember fixing my dolly's hair, um, but I never knew it was called Saran hair. And of course, there was the dolls that wet. You'd fill a bottle full of water and you'd feed it to them. And of course, it would run through the inside of the doll, come out the other end, and you'd have a wet diaper. So and look at that. Ricky Jr. from I Love Lucy. Oh, cute. How cute. I don't remember ever seeing that as a kid. But I do remember I Love Lucy. Annie Oakley doll from the TV show. Oh, cute. Look at her. She's adorable. Howdy Doody. From the TV show. And we haven't been talking much about the price on these, but I you, you can probably see what they're all costing. $14.98. I know. Hit by luggage for that price. Yes. <laughs> That's why you maybe only got a doll at Christmas time. They weren't all that cheap always. And it was kind of the thing. You know, you got you got gifts at your birthdays, you got gifts at Christmas. It wasn't a thing where you got gifts all year long. Like it kind of seems like some kids do these days. Little baby dolls. All their little underclothing. This one. Dolls you can sew for. A little story about that. My mom had a treadle sew machine. And that's what I learned to sew on. And my brother, he also liked to sew. But one afternoon, he sewed right into his finger. And I remember he screamed and my mom screamed and it was kind of a chore. And I remember her having to get up pliers to pull the needle out of the finger. Ugh. It was gross. But, you know, it healed up and there you were again. You just left not to put your finger under there ever again. Oh, did I go too fast there? Little baby dolls, little cubie doll. Those cute little outfits. And this was furniture for the dollies. Cute little cribs and bunk beds. Um, little trunks to put the doll and their clothes in. Little high chairs. I had that one. And I still do. It's up in my attic. Little baby bath. Mine has that same exact decal on it. I guess I know where my parents got it from. Um, oh, my daughter has one of these that she got at a collector show. She paid a little more than that. <laughs> and of course, it was already 50 years old or so. Um, the furniture was so lifelike, too, back in those days. And it was made well. It was really fun. Great time to be a kid, as far as I'm concerned. And there's your sewing machine. Oh, yes. My exact sewing machine. Let's see which Oh, yeah, this one here. Um, and I have it in my little display case. Yep. And all the little cookware. Every little girl, too, had a china tea set. You always, you had a lot of tea parties as a little kid then, those, those years. Adorable stuff. Costume jewelry crafting. And you'd have a cook set. You would make your little cook-up things. Sometimes you'd bring your cooking stuff out while your mom was cooking, and you'd imitate her just using your pint-sized stuff. 
Look at that. Beautiful. Um, playhouse. Spent hours playing with that. We have more or are we at the end of our section? There's we have, more. We have more. All right. I love the color pages. Oh, there was the um, medieval fortress with the knights. Um, of course, another barn with all the little animals. We had this same one here. I played that a lot. It was my brother's, but I say I was a tomboy. I played with all the boys stuff, too. And a little cowboy town. And that was a Roy Rogers one. I would have gave anything for that Roy Rogers stuff. But I think I had more of the generic dime store one. But it was okay. Still a lot of fun. That Roy Rogers set, three ninety eight. Oh, probably get it for three hundred ninety eight. Yeah, three hundred ninety eight nowadays. Yep. <laughs> Little record players. Seen one of these not too long ago at a state sale. Of course, they wanted a lot of money for it. And these little toy accordions that played really good and sounded really good. We actually had a little chord organ, and I learned to play it by ear. It was fun. And musical, more musical items here. The guitars, the drums. A lot of kids had drum sets. Nowadays, parents go, don't you dare give my kid a drum set. But I think it's because houses maybe were bigger and you could have your drums down in the basement. Nobody heard you. And then trains. Oh, trains were a big thing. Had some family friends. Um, they had a humongous, enormous train set upstairs. And their um, upstairs where the older boys shared bedrooms up there it was a huge upstairs. And they had a huge, huge train track that was built up with all the different little houses and like these little things, little um, track markers and. Oh, it was fun. It was a big one, too. It was all, it would light up. It had smoke that came out of it. It was pretty cool. Yep. Trains were very popular. Very, very popular. And to this day, they still are. There's still people that are major into train collecting and playing with trains. Of course, most of them are more my age, but that's okay. Do what you enjoy. Why not? Life's short. And another very popular toy was the Lincoln Logs. They were great. And these little things, what were they called? Kiwi Construction? I don't think I ever knew what that was called. But I know I had those, played with those a lot. Oh, Army. Everybody played Army. Little, little Army men. I don't see it in this book, but we had a little... Um, it was kind of a, I want to say, you put little bullets in it and it would actually shoot from one side of the living room to the other side. And so me and my brother, we would set up our army guys and we'd see how many of our army guys we could actually shoot down with our, oh, they were like a little cannon, but it was shot little wood bullets. Like I say, it went about probably a good 15, 20 feet. You just don't see toys like that anymore. Because you were afraid you're going to get your eyes shot out. 
Yeah, we never got our eyes shot out. <laughs> Tell the story about how you lost your eye. Oh, I never lost my eye. <laughs> we did have a glass eye we got a hold of one time. That was a lot of fun to play with. <laughs> somebody lost their eye. <laughs> yeah, somebody lost their eye. And just all the fun little typewriters and art sketching chalkboards and fun things like that. Typewriter. Steering wheel, you take them off, put in the car so you can drive the car down the road along with your mom or dad, whoever was driving. And again, that was usually dad's. Moms didn't usually drive that often. They didn't often have licenses even. Oh, nurses' kits, doctors' kits. Oh, yeah. You played that too. A lot. Sometimes your patients were your dogs or your cats, but they were pretty good. Is about... that an original Mr. Potato Head? Where do you see that? Oh, over here. Hmm. Pretty creepy. Pretty creepy. I had one like that. Except mine actually had a styrofoam head. You didn't actually have to use a real potato, which was probably good because you'd probably leave it in your room and it start rotting and it's stinky <laughs> now look at these guns and holsters oh my gosh how cool we had one similar to this uh it actually shot little ping pong balls so it didn't hurt anybody but it would shoot them quite away so that was a lot of fun that was my brother's again too boy look at that very roger one how cool very cool. These are very expensive nowadays. You try and buy them. Really super expensive. But they were so much fun. To have a little outfit like that. I never had one, but that would have been a dream come true. Although I did have a little vest. Except I think that was my brother's. No, maybe it was mine. I don't know. I still got it, though. Pretty tiny, though. <laughs> <coughs> And the little cars. Oh my gosh. I never had one, but my father had one. So when we went back to visit his home, uh, his parents' home, uh, I always rode his. And of course, his was more from the 1920s. But um, so it was a little more antiquated than these, but it got the same job done. These just were cuter. Painted up nice. Look at working lights. Working horn. And of course, wagons. Everybody had wagons. Everybody had scooters. And tricycles. And of course, everybody, when you had a bicycle, everybody learned to ride with training wheels. But, you know, it, you know, you had them on there for a week and you were ready to get them taken off because you were ready to go. I thought this was adorable. I don't ever remember even seeing such a thing as a kid. A little scooter like that. Oh, cool. Oh, and then, of course, there was the little science kits. The little lab kits. Those were fun. Sometimes they said that some of the things you would have been able to make with those. Thank goodness we didn't know how to make some of the stuff. But they said they, there was some ingredients in some of those that was pretty dangerous. I don't know. I just remember playing with them and having a lot of fun with them. Never blew anything up. Thank goodness. And let's see, woodworking, that was kind of cool. You actually would take this and plug it into the wall. So that tip got really hot. 
So you had to be careful, especially where you put it down. You had to be careful what you were doing. You had to think things through before you did them, especially if you were planning on making a cute little artwork like some of these. You had to be careful. You had to learn to be patient. You had to figure like, okay, this is something that's going to take me many, many hours to do. I'll work on it a little bit every day till I get it done. Boats and cars and helicopters, trains. That's our little doggy barking every once in a while. He wants attention. He's getting very bored with us. Here's carpentry sets. And those things were a real saw, a real little hammer, real little drills. All this stuff really, really worked, which was cool. My dad spent a lot of time making stuff out in the garage, and I spent a lot of time right next to him watching what he was doing and learning from what he was doing. In fact, I worked on my own car for many, many years, and I, in turn, passed that on to um, a couple of my children. My daughter, she works on her car all the time. So I remember the first time that I learned the difference between a, what a pliers and a screwdriver was. I was big enough so when I sat down on my haunches, I could look at my dad working on the car. And one time he said, give me a pliers, and I knew what the pliers was. I was so proud of myself. You could make your own telephone. Oh, yeah. Furniture. Again, so well made. Last forever. Cute little chair, rocking chairs. Look at the way this, look at this little set here. Oh, how adorable. Games, games, games. Saturday afternoon, your friends would come over, and if it was a rainy day, in the morning you'd watch cartoons, and in the afternoon you would maybe watch a scary movie, and then later in the afternoon you'd pull out a card game, or a board game, and it could have been a Monopoly, and knew if it was Monopoly, it was really wet and rainy out, and you'd be at the, playing the game for hours. But that was fun. That was just a heck of a lot of fun. More games. Little pool table. My brother, actually when he was a teenager, bought, he worked uh, at a car wash. And he saved up his money and he actually bought a full-size pool table. And he had enough room in his bedroom for his pool table and still his bed and everything. And that was fun coming home after school and going in and playing some pool with him. Never learned to play real well, though. This is our last page of toys. Uh, looked like we had a shooting game on here. Um, looked like the electronic football game. Very popular. Fun games. Chinese checkers, Parcheesi, Dominoes, great games. So, want to thank you for joining us again and hope that you will subscribe and see another section of our Sears Christmas book from 1954.